Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome, folks, again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Wow. President Trump. Wouldn't that be something, wouldn't it? Well, that's all the talk right now. President Trump. Well, the guy's leading in the polls. He's leading in the polls, my friend. Well, welcome to this show. This time, this hour, we're going to be talking about uh, the, the polls. We're going to be talking about the uh, presidential election. We're going to talk about uh, well, that's the national election aspect of it. But we're going to come back and we're going to talk about the Oregon elections, all the Oregon issues that we have in the in the state, and and uh, some of the things that's been happening here. What about our issues? What about our issues? Are they going to be of some concern? Well, anyway, as you can see, I'm still donning my, donning my cap, still trying to get those, those vets to get out there and get their benefits. And again, tell you, and their loved ones out there, please get, you, get those guys out and take them down to the VA, whether it be downtown or whether it be in Vancouver, and, and get them to sign up is very, very important. Okay. Well, guess what? Again, we, we have probably the only brave soul in this state, here in the state of Oregon, that's willing to come and talk about issues uh, relating to two of the major brands, one of which I can't get on the show for some strange reason. They're just not showing up. And the other is just right here with the issues. And somebody I'm, I'm, I feel very, very proud to know, and I'm talking about Art Robinson. Here he is right here. How you doing, Art? Fine. How are you? Good, good. You notice, you notice his attire. Uh, the man's a working man. You know, he's, he's out there yeah, working. Yeah, this is actually what I wear. We, it was, well, we didn't do this on purpose. I know it's not that, a that's right. That, exactly. That's <laughs> right. I, I was, I mean, imagine now, he, he's driven some, well, geez, how, how many miles is that like, from, from Grants Pass? Uh, it's four and a half Coburn. hours. About four and a half hours just to be here in the, here in the metro area uh, to come and, and be on the show. With me. I'm really, I mean, I'm, re I'm really excited about this guy. He's, he does so much. He does so much. So it's, it's so important that we know what's going on here in Oregon. So Art's going to be here with me today, and, and we're going to discuss a number of subject matters, and, and I think uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, with that, though, what I'm going to do, I know some of you are probably new to the show, but for others of you who not known who Art has been, uh, we're going to spend a little time with him on the front end to kind of give you a feel about why he's credible enough to talk about some of the issues that we're going to be talking about. And, again, I'll start off by saying yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a former, former chair of the Oregon Republican Party, but he's also a scientist, a well-renowned scientist in his own rights. And so I think that's where we'll start off right off the bat. All right, let's talk a little bit about what you do. Yeah, well, I, uh, I, I'm a physical chemist, right. and I've concentrated most of my life on protein chemistry. That's the structure and function of the mole large molecules that make up most of the functional molecules in the human body. Mm -hmm. And also I work on diagnostic medicine trying to get more and more information from breath and urine and other body fluids about your current and future health. Mm -hmm. So about half my work's practical and half of it is uh, sort of fundamental biochemistry. And I'm fortunate to work with my sons and colleagues. There's a group of us that work together on these things. Mm -hmm. I noticed that I had the opportunity to visit your site mm -hmm. where you work actually. And it, it's, not, it's not just the lab, the laboratory there. I mean, it's it's quite a facility. I mean, you got you got other farming interests out there, and, and yeah. I see everybody everybody's so interested in that part of life, which I, I like that part because that's where I grew up. Well, my wife and I did something different. We were both scientists, and but we also wanted to raise our children on an Oregon farm, so we looked around for a couple of years and then uh, found one that we liked in Josephine County, and together with some colleagues that helped us, we founded a little research laboratory there, and it. It did some useful things, but then gradually my sons and daughters became scientists, and that made us able to do more. So we have a very fine research laboratory. It's nonprofit. It's just doing research for public benefit, and uh, it's been there about 35 years, and we have a lot of fun. Wow, and still doing it. Yeah. Right, 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 right. And I think one of the one of the areas that I that I was very interested in when we first started talking was, was the sickle cell aspect. And you you talked a little bit about what sickle cell yeah, was. Yeah. Well, we don't work on sickle right, cell anemia, right. but uh, I had a colleague, Linus Pauling, worked a lot on it when when uh, for a long time. Sickle cell anemia is a genetic disease, and it uh, one the, the the protein molecules are built of amino acids and uh, 20 different building blocks. 
and one of those building blocks is wrong in the sickle cell gene. It, it, it's a change. It's not, not right. And this changes the structure of the hemoglobin molecule. That's the blood carrying, the oxygen carrying mm -hmm. molecule in your blood. It changes the structure so it crystallizes in the red cells. This distorts the shape of the red blood cells and they stick in your capillaries. Mm -hmm. And that keeps them from carrying oxygen properly to the peripheral parts of your body. It's very painful and uh, 30 years ago, few sickle cell victims became, lived past the age of about 20. Hmm. But it's an interesting, it's tragic of course, but also an interesting disease that afflicts mostly black people. And the reason for that is that if you have if both genes, your mother and your father are sickle genes, then you have the disease. If you mother or your father doesn't carry the gene, then you're a carrier, but you don't have the overt symptoms of the disease, mm. but you do have immunity to malaria. And malaria was so common in Africa that even though one-fourth of the people were dying of this you know, tragic disease, it was an advantage because the other three-fourths, or the other, I mean, half of the others were immune to malaria. Mm. So that's a genetic disease that became very widespread in the black population because they come from Africa where malaria was endemic. Hmm. And there's, it's a genetic disease, there's nothing currently we can do about it, mm -hmm. uh, except one thing you can do is to, uh, if you can avoid it, keep carriers from marrying each other. Because unless two carriers marry, they don't get a child with the overt disease. Hmm. That's the only thing you can do because we don't know enough about hmm. genetics now to change the genetics of individuals. Hmm. Interesting. It has a historical importance because it was the first genetic disease that was ever understood. Mm -hmm. Before sickle cell anemia was understood, uh, the, the, the fact that there could be a disease afflicting the structure of a molecule that caused a disease had never been demonstrated. Mm. So it's historically important. It was the very first genetic disease discovered and understood. Mm. You know, another 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 area mm -hmm. I'd like to again share with the viewing public is this 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 Ewing uh, the, the urine, if you will, mm -hmm. experiments that you were encountered. Yeah. I noticed that they tried to play play this uh, against you when you were <laughs> running for office. Yeah. But that was not the case, and it's a very important piece because because what it brings to the table as far as the, the experiments that you're doing with you. Yeah. Urine, well, you my doing? opponent and his colleagues the tried Fazio, to make a joke of it, Fazio, but. Yeah. Uh, We've been working on this about 40 years. 40 years? And uh, my colleagues, Linus and our colleagues, founded this field which is called metabolic profiling at about around 1970. And what it means is you, uh, you measure a large number of substances, your, your urine, your breath, urine is work on it because it's easy to get, mm -hmm. breath is harder to trap and function and do and work with. But uh, your body fluids contain small molecules which are produced uh, through the chemistry of life. Mm -hmm. They're given off by your metabolism. And there are thousands of them. And they reflect virtually all the things that are going on inside your body. So if you measure a large number of them and then study the whole group, look at patterns, you can find out a lot of interesting things. Uh, we think you can find out a lot about your future health as well as your present health. Mm. Of course, you can diagnose disease. You could do all sorts of interesting things. For example, one third, 30% of the thousands of chemicals in your urine are H correlated. H correlated? Yeah, so if we measure urine, we can tell how old you are. Hmm. Uh, we can also tell who you are because it's just a fingerprint. Uh, hmm. Your urine is a fingerprint just as surely as the one on your finger. Hmm. But the main thing is that there are fingerprints in your urine and breath that tell a lot about diseases you may be getting like a degenerative disease like cancer comes on for years before you know you have it. And so if you can fight it earlier, that's an advantage, but you have to find it. And also there it's they, these methods are good for diagnosing disease, for following therapy to see how you're doing with a particular therapy to, to help the doctor mm -hmm. do the best. In any case, uh, we started this in the 70s when we could measure about 200 things in a urine sample. We had to have a large sample and it took about six hours hmm. okay now we can measure 2,000 in a few seconds and in the laboratory we're using a few minutes but it can be done in a few seconds and this is uh, extraordinary because we may be able to create tests that are very very cheap like 
for five dollars you get a, a test which warns you about a whole panoply of diseases you may be acquiring and tells you other things about your health that could help you live longer and healthier. Mm -hmm. So the information content of a urine sample is enormous. Mm -hmm. And now the technology, the measurement technology has reached a point where you can extract that information. The thing that the, uh, uh, that the politicians were laughing about is an a project we have to calibrate these tools. So you have, you're measuring 2,000 substances. You have the n amounts of them. But, and there's patterns. But in order to, to, to calibrate the tool so you know how to understand the pattern, you have to take a group of people and watch their health and watch their pattern so that you can empirically calibrate the patterns you're seeing in a useful way. Mm -hmm. So we have a project to uh, collect urine samples periodically from 15,000 Oregonians and follow their health and well-being and use that to calibrate this tool so that we will be able to tell Oregonians who are not in the 15,000 something about their health that will be useful to them mm -hmm. because we calibrated the tool with the 15,000 that we collected. Mm -hmm. so it's a cryogenic bank. You give a urine sample, a little vial, and we mm -hmm. put it away at minus 80 degrees centigrade, and then we can take it out. And suppose in this group of 15,000, 10 people uh, uh, develop multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. Well, we could take those 10 we go back in our freezers, pull out the urine from those people, say three years before they knew they had MS, and some controls, and look and find a pattern for MS. We already know there's one there from right, previous work. Right, right. Then you measure people's urine as you go along. You say, hey, last time we saw that pattern, the person got MS three years later. Hmm. And then the doctor could intervene earlier. You get the idea. Hmm. But uh, uh, breath, urine... Uh, blood to a certain extent. These fluids have enormous chemical information in them, and we've been specialists for 40 years in how to extract that information so that it is useful to the improvement of human health. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. But when you have a congressional candidate collecting urine samples, you can make fun of him if yeah, you want. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that, it was, yeah, uh, that was the only thing he can re revert to, right? Is that the idea? Well, it was interesting because you had a uh, sitting congressman out there uh, trying to destroy a, health, a medical research project that's 40 years old in order to get votes, yeah, right, which right, was a right, fairly unprincipled right. situation. Wow, wow, wow. Well, look, again, let, let's just go right, let's just tag right on that to that man. All of a sudden, you know, you, this is what you've been doing for years, if you will, and all of a sudden you, you had this interest, if you will, because of your surroundings mm -hmm. about getting into politics. Mm -hmm. And we can just go through that quickly, uh, just how yeah. that came about, and then all of a sudden... Well, it's, it's just... Uh, it's like your house is on fire, you grab a bucket. Mm -hmm. uh, we only have worked in politics in a serious way twice, our family. We moved to Oregon 35 years ago. But during the Cold War, we worked a lot on civil defense, civilian preparedness for nuclear war. And we did a lot. We worked with the Federal Emergency Management Agency, with the Reagan administration, with a lot of congressmen and senators, and with a group of about 8,000 people across the country. And we did that because we were very concerned that there could be a war and there'd be terrible suffering on the part of the American people and that could be averted somewhat if we knew we were prepared. Mm -hmm. So we worked on civil defense. In this case, uh, we're like most informed Americans watching this horror story unfold in our nation, the things our politicians have done to, to damage our nation and our lives. And it finally got to the point we said, gee, can't we do something to help? Mm -hmm. And since we have a particularly liberal socialist congressman who was doing a particularly large amount of damage to our nation, we thought, okay, we'll try to replace him. We didn't know anything about the politics of doing that, and we failed so far to do it. But we got into politics again because we were so concerned about what was going on in Washington, we decided to try to help. And it's just like the work on civil defense. In fact, it is kind of an extension of the work on civil mm. defense. Mm. Our nation's in very serious trouble. So there are, and we're not alone, there are millions of Americans stepping forward now. And they're saying, gee, what can I do to help? Mm -hmm. If you go to a Tea Party rally, you know, the, the opposition will demonize the Tea Party. If you go to one of a Tea Party rally and look at the people, it's usually several hundred nice Americans who just walked out of their houses and said, this is horrible, what can mm -hmm. I do to help? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily have any particular political bent. They just, they see the problems in their country. 
they see these politicians in Washington spoiling our mm -hmm. nation, and they just, they're nice people, just walked out, came to a rally and said, is there anything I can do to help? Hmm. And we're just like them. Well, you know, and uh, again, taking along on that particular mm -hmm. level, you, again, like you said, you uh, you basically were looking at politics and then all of a sudden uh, you just say, gee whiz, I think I want to get involved in this process. So yeah. so now you, you run for office, right? What, what, what was the feeling on the in the field? What, what were you hearing from most of the people? Oh, people were really nice to us. It was okay. like, it was walking like walking into a movie. Mm -hmm. Suddenly there were thousands of people around us wanting to help. But know? they were upset though initially, right? Huh? They weren't they upset about the conditioning and this and the other? Well, they're, the, the people are generally upset. Right. In District 4, they didn't have a, uh, a good solid contender in trying to get rid of the unprincipled man they had. Mm -hmm. So when we started to run, they thought there was a chance we could get rid of him. So thousands of them, and we still have acquired enormous numbers of friends doing mm -hmm. it. It was a wonderful experience. Uh, it'd be better to win for them. Yeah, but we yeah. had a lot of fun, and we gained a lot of friends. Yeah. Uh, then we went one step further, of course. Uh, I went to one meeting too many and wound up chairman of the Republican Party in mm -hmm. Oregon. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, that was really eye-opening. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What do you think you've accomplished in during that particular time period? I, mean, I don't know what you accomplished you anything. Mean, we didn't mean? win the elections. Well, but there was there was, there was some one particular <laughs> there was one one particular light on that I felt with, and then when you got me involved in this process, yes, no, we in the transition. We, if we want to, we can point to some yeah, things yeah, that are yeah, value. Right, right, right. But also, uh, you don't necessarily have to win a battle to win yeah, a war. Exactly. Um, uh, so, you might say we went into some battles. We learned a lot. We can. We educated ourselves. We helped educate our friends and the public. Uh, every American that steps forward and tries to help his country mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily uh, get a medal because he succeeded. But the more that step forward and try to help, the more we learn about our problems and the better chance we have. Mm -hmm. And I think probably by some measuring device, maybe we should use your own analysis, but mm -hmm. that wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. By some, me there's some measuring device, it would probably show that because our family worked very hard for six years on this, mm -hmm. we did a little good. Mm -hmm. And if we did that much good, and a million American families do it, maybe our country will be okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, 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 good. Well, look, uh, again, that was one area there that I was very interested in. As you know, you, you, you convinced me to get involved in the process, and and I ended up being an engagement chair, and as a as a as a as opposed to not necessarily as opposed to, but I was very much interested in the diversity aspect of it and trying to see, talk to inclusion and yeah. how do we get out of this thing so that we can all be a part, be a whole, if you yeah. will. And uh, this engagement aspect of it. Uh, what, what was your rationale and how did you get into, into that mindset? Well, you and I uh, probably dragged each other into the position yeah. we were in. Yes. But uh, in looking at the electorate, uh, especially when I had the job as state chairman, I. Th this business of separating people by race is ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. It's like saying you got brown eyes and I got blue eyes. And he's got gray eyes, so we're three minority groups. We're all. <laughs> this mm -hmm. is silly. Mm -hmm. And the uh, you were mentioning genetics before. Uh, Ninety-nine point nine 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 percent of our genetics are identical, and you have this little twerk, you know. And some people have a yellow cast to their skin, and some have a black brown cast to their skin. And we're going to make and we're going to run our nation because of this? It's crazy. So, and I, I think, and I, you and I think the same along the lines like this, if you, if you go to the Spanish-American community or the African-American community, I have to be very careful how I call the community, but it's all politically yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> What's the word today? Yeah. But if you go to, one of, uh, to any, or, or the Asian community, and you say, I'm here to outreach to you people for your votes. Mm -hmm. In my view, you're dead in the water when mm -hmm. you get there. Mm -hmm. You have to go into those communities and say, look, we're all the same. Where are your candidates? We want candidates from your neighborhood. You know, you, there's maybe a big black neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You don't go and roll in there and say, well, you know, I'm, I'm from, the, from the political establishment. And we, we'd really like to convince you to vote for mm -hmm. us. You go to that neighborhood and say, where are your candidates, you know? We're all Americans, and you're not doing your part. What are you you're using? not running for office. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, and, and actually, what you have to say and mean it is that you can't see any difference between Americans. Mm -hmm. We're all fortunate to live in this wonderful country. We're all challenged because some 
pretty bad things are being done that are in danger our country. And we're all in it together. And we all share the heritage of, the, of being able to live here. And new immigrants are coming all the time, mm -hmm. presumably because they like the place. And you, you, if you, you separate people by race, you play into the hands of those who will destroy our country. They want it that way. They want to divide and conquer. They want the black people to think that they're a separate minority. They want the Hispanics to think that. They want the Asians to think that. Uh, they want the American Indians who've been here forever to think that they're not Americans, that they're something special. And once you can divide people like that, then you can control them in an unprincipled way and damage them. And they've been doing it to our country. And they've been succeeding. And what you and I agreed on is that we weren't talking race anymore. Mm -hmm. We're talking about engagement. And uh, that's to engage voters who are in, whether it's neighborhoods or counties or blocks or whatever, who are not engaged, who are not sending in candidates, who are not trying to elect people to office who carry their values and American values. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, I think in, we need to get rid of the whole idea of race. Mm -hmm. You know, going to the black people, right after the Civil War, there was a very famous man named uh, Booker T. Washington. He built Tuskegee University. And he was the most famous black man in the South and the North after the war, revered in both places. Mm -hmm. And he just said to his people, he said, you work hard, create things of value, trade with your neighbors, be a productive member of your community, and nobody's going to care about the color of your skin. Mm -hmm. And he was right. Mm -hmm. And these people that go out and try to tell people that, you know, they belong to this separate thing and divide them, all they're doing is getting control over them. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I, I strongly believe that. And you and I said we'd, we'd make an engagement yeah. committee, yeah. and that's causing some waves, right? Yeah. Because yeah, the sure. racists among us mm -hmm. don't like it. Yeah. And now that I'm not state chair, you're having trouble maintaining the engagement committee because there are racists. I mean, they're racist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a racist yeah. thing to come into your community and say, hey, I see you're all black and you're all a minority, and I got a minority issue that's going to push your hot button and yeah. get your votes. That's mm -hmm. just unprincipled and it's racist. Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm... And, I'm, I'm and that, that, uh, that's that the way race. to approach it. Okay. We're all Americans okay. to heck with this. This is crazy. Do you, do you think that there'll be some point where we'll, we can get out of that and get into that, 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 that I think next so. two? Okay. It's common okay. sense. And I think that that's I think that that's a good approach, and I think a lot of thoughtful people think the same way. Mm -hmm. You and I met each other. If we come from entirely different backgrounds, mm -hmm. we completely agreed on this. And you spent your life in yeah. the politics of Portland. Yeah, very much you so. know, yeah, very much so. Very much. And I uh, and I've worked in science all my life, and I, you know, in, in the scientific world, you ask what what the man's mind can do and what he's discovered. Mm -hmm. We don't put the race of the authors on our research papers, mm -hmm. <laughs> and. So uh, the world I live in, in, in the scientific research world, uh, nobody would even dream yeah. of say, saying, well, let's see, we'll, uh, we'll rate this guy's research a little different than this guy's because I notice the color of his skin. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to, anyway, you see. Yeah, so oh, yeah. very, very it, much so. It is so. crazy in national affairs, yeah, too. Yeah, very, very much so. Because, because what comes to mind, like right now, you know, we've got the, we're still regurgitating on the issue of voting rights mm -hmm. act, you know, as opposed to just standardizing the whole deal under one roof. Uh, now we've got the other issue of um, this other issue of Black Lives Matter. I mean, it's it's a, it's a definition that a lot of folks don't understand because it, we still putting the, it's the race piece aspect of it because all lives matter. But the fact of the matter is, when you start thinking about Black Lives. Education system comes right, right out the right out the front well, of the field. Well, we but we do have you know, we do have uh, that to say that we shouldn't pay attention to race. Yeah, got to. That's true. Yes. It's also true that we have racial thinking people among mm -hmm, us, mm -hmm. and they've done a lot of damage to our educational mm -hmm. system, and they have done special damage in communities that uh, in black communities. Oh yeah, oh yeah, very much so. And and that. Uh, those are mostly white unions mm -hmm. wrecking the lives of black kids. Mm -hmm. And there is, there is racism, racism in our public school system, and it should be stopped yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you say that, of course, they say you're against the schools. Oh, hey. But uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, the, uh, 
Uh, well, the worst example, which I've written about many times, is in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. It happens that most of the people who live in Washington, D.C. are black. Mm -hmm. Yet, from their schools, 40% of the students don't graduate from high school, and the 60% who do read at the fifth grade level. Yeah. That is a system which is cutting that whole city of young people off at the knees by not giving them good educations. And they know it. And it's not the city. The United States Congress runs the educational mm -hmm. system of Washington, D.C., them and the unions. Mm -hmm. And the Congress won't cross the unions, and the unions like what they're doing. Yeah. It's, that's criminal. And, uh, and it has been easier to do in uh, poorer communities than it is to do in more affluent communities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a poor community in which it's just unthinkable what they're doing to young people. You know, when you and those are young Americans, right, they're not right, black. Right, exactly. But there is a tendency exactly. to do this in black communities right, more. Exactly. In fact, what comes to mind here locally, here in the mm -hmm. Portland metropolitan area, here in Oregon, mm -hmm. uh, just recently, for that matter, Portland Public School cut down the amount of time that a, that a child would be in the classroom. Yeah, well, and this, you know, this it, is it, the union. It, it, this is, this is yeah, crazy. And, and, you know, across the nation, uh, they spend about ten thousand dollars per student mm -hmm. per year, K through twelve. Mm -hmm. That means a classroom of thirty students gets three hundred thousand cash. That doesn't go to the teacher. It doesn't go to the students. It goes to the union bureaucrats that run the schools. You know how much it is in Portland? Fourteen thousand. In Portland, it's fourteen thousand per student. And these guys want to cut down on the amount of classes. Yeah. Because they want fifteen thousand. Yeah. They want sixteen. They want more money, so they go to the people and say, gee, we can't teach them with this amount. Of Portland's already getting 14000 per student, and the rest of the country is averaging ten. Yeah. And uh, it's, this is just union apparatchiks demanding money. And it is the teachers. I mean, some teachers are in this, but the, if, you, if you take the 10000 that means across the country, on average, a 30-kid classroom for nine months 300000 in cash is spent mm -hmm. on that classroom. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get to the teacher, and it doesn't get to the guy who, runs, who, who built the classroom. Mm -hmm. It's siphoned all the way along by special interests that are empowered by the system that's got control of those schools. And those are, that's a system empowered by the education unions. Mm -hmm. Even Governor Kitzhaber was planning to try to rein that in in Oregon one of the reasons he's not governor anymore. Yeah. The unions went after him. Even our Democrat governor, right, wanted to stop that in Oregon hmm. because he wanted those resources to go for our students, not for the union bureaucracy. But then, and so the unions hated him for it. But you know, again, it brings up another point about a branding. You know, there are yeah. two major brands. Yeah. There's the, there's the Republican brand and then there's the Democratic yeah. brand. And in most cases, the Democratic brand tends to take the, the identification of mm -hmm. identifying the, the African American or blacks, black American whatever, identifying with the with the donkey, if you will, or the, the yeah. Democratic brand. And and the Republican brand is identified as the anti the education system along yeah. that line or whatever. Well, what, what, what's what's the deal? Well, any, any people will be smart to realize that neither one of these brands have their best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. uh, there are very fine people in I'm sure both groups. Uh, in the Republicans, whom I know better, there are wonderful grassroots Republicans across this state. And there are wonderful grassroots Republicans in the county parties trying to help and so forth. But uh, this, the politicians you, that they are electing, the Republican politicians they elect, reflect the party that is electing them. Yeah. And we haven't been electing a very good group. That's not to say they're all bad. There's some very fine people who are serving our country, as, and they're Republicans. There's some fine Democrats serving mm -hmm. our country. But this, uh, this branding is just not true. Mm -hmm. And the, the people have to look at the individual and say, what would he want to do for our education system? Mm -hmm. They've got to get rid of the D and the R. Because mm -hmm. the D and the R are both pandering to the system that we have the system we have is failing the students. Mm -hmm. Well, during your tenure, during that particular time, do you think there might be some changes? And well, I hope so. Uh, you can see, for example, the homeschool movement. Right. Our family's been involved in homeschooling. Mm -hmm. Fifty years ago, when I went to school, there were no homeschools. Mm -hmm. You didn't need them. 
but the system, the, the educational system is gradually degraded to the point that you see this movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, pe people are more and more getting fed up with these schools and maybe it'll change. Oh, I know. Oh. So. We look like we're gonna, we may take a short break here. We're gonna take a short break and we're gonna come back with Art and some other interesting things that he has to talk about. We haven't talked about the presidential race yet. That's the fun side of it. But again, it's, a very, it's still a very serious side anyway. We're gonna take a short break and we'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome again to the segment of, again, the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. We've been sitting here talking with the uh, former chair of the Oregon Republican Party, talking about issues uh, uh, that, that are reflective here locally. Uh, and uh, I thought we'd just go on and stop, go, go right back into that situation. We went through the school system aspect of it and Art went through that aspect of it. But now there's another area that when I think about uh, the branding aspect of it, I think about the Black Lives Matter. I'm very familiar with the again, being outreach yeah. with the young lady that's kind of like the leading proponent in that area, Teresa yeah. Refford, and um, and knowing that uh, it was all in regards to recognizing the issues of of, of, uh, mm -hmm. of race and whatever as it relates to the the young people, yeah. the children, whatever. But but bringing it local, uh, when I think about that brand piece, she. Um, she was leading the proponent, and then there were a couple of uh, uh, demonstrations, if you will, uh, uh, in, here in, in, in the Portland metropolitan area. And I noticed that the first time around, she was arrested. Mm. Uh, she was arrested, and, um, and the majority of the folks were white. Mm -hmm. But it was supposed to be Black Lives Matter, you know, <laughs> but they were all, everybody was there. Yeah. And um, then on the other hand, in fact, I, in all due respect, I. I, I went to one of the events, uh, a church, a uh, very prominent church here in the Portland metropolitan area, Bethel Amy Church, held a kind of a, mm -hmm. a, a recognition, you know, a recognizing, yeah. if you will, the issue that we're having. But then the second time around, um, uh, there was another demonstration downtown in the front of City Hall, and the same thing, the numbers and whatever. But no one was rest, arrested, mm -hmm. and it, that was it. I mean, there was no, you know, yeah. but the thing that got me about that was, was in the discussion. That um, that one of the local talk show hosts from Town Two, uh, actually Oregonian, Steve Dunn, uh, he had the uh, he had he had the assistant chief, and also kind of like a, I think either, either the uh, chief of staff of uh, the mayor, Mayor Mayor mm -hmm. Charlie Hill, uh, they were interviewing these guys, and then they were talking about this this whole piece, and what came out of that organization was. There was no brand because the the mayor is is a nonpartisan race aspect uh -huh. of it, but no brand. But Republicans were basically blamed. Yeah, uh, you, you you understand where uh -huh. I'm coming from? Yeah. That's a, that's an issue. Um, no, it shouldn't be Black Lives Matter. It should right. be Human Lives Matter. Right, right, right. All my life, for 40 years, uh, we talked about the right. urine research. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Our goal is to increase the quality, quantity, and length of human life. Mm -hmm. On the forms we send out for them to fill out. When they give us a urine sample, mm -hmm. it never occurred to us to put race on the form. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not, right, 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 not, right, not the point. Right. And so you're you're trying to. Uh, a lot of my work and my work and my colleagues, our whole lives have been devoted mm -hmm. to trying to 
because hum human lives matter. Mm -hmm. Right. And the idea that uh, there's a difference between a black life and a white life mm -hmm. and a yellow life mm -hmm. is crazy. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have a big country. There are 300 million people living in it. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of police officers. Some of them are poorly trained. There are so many of them, some of them won't be even nice right. people. Mm -hmm. So these things happen. And uh, the, uh, the approach should be every human life right, matters. Right, right. And uh, it isn't a question of what race the person was. Mm -hmm. It's a question of whether he died unnecessarily and, uh, and in an unprincipled way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, that should morph into human lives matter. Yeah, yeah. And again, that, as you say, we, we we're trying to achieve that, because but race gets point, put up in the, in but the that, table. You know, it's that funny, now, black lives matter, and yet some same politicians that push that are happy with the concept of abortion. Right, 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 right. Oh yeah, very much so. Human lives, human lives matter would mean we have to save them all, right? Mm -hmm. But if we point at one particular minority mm -hmm. group mm -hmm. and one particular age group, mm -hmm. uh, then they they try to make a political point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, in fact, the other thing that came to mind was that when they demonstrated in um, in Seattle, when two young lady African black mm -hmm. women went up and basically picked up the mic from from uh, Bernie, mm -hmm. and um, uh, but the comments were again same deal. Some comments were made about the fact that these were Republican activists that, that were, and that's that's not the case. The, the bottom line is that, in all due respect, the bottom line was that they were just trying to get attention to some lives, if you will, mm -hmm. many of, many of whom happened to be young black men, and if you will, when we were having problems along that line. But my point is that you know, as a result of that. They're saying, hey, look, can you look at what we're doing? Meaning that if it was just regular, they couldn't get the press. You know what I'm saying? So it goes back to the same thing you same and I were problem. talking right. about. Yeah. Get the race out of politics. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I don't understand. And get the concerns. It's, it's extremely destructive. Yes, and yes. Everywhere. And that's yes. why you and I have an engagement yes. committee, and we still do. Yes, very much so. And if very I'm the so. former ORP chair, yes. you are the engagement chairman. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I, pre I appreciate that because... <laughs> Because, like you said, and nobody can take it away from you. That's right. That's and if right. you become the former engagement chairman, you do still as much damage as you're doing today. Okay. Because you keep so. working on it. Yes, I will. That's yes, right. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. <laughs> okay. So I'm just, so I'm just saying is that I think we're all aware of what the, yeah. what these problems are. And then, like I said, because of that, when you talked about the school system, we got the largest school district in the state of Oregon. Yeah. And where they're picking up uh, what fourteen thousand dollars per child. That's a lot of money. That's a, that's a lot of money. Four hundred and twenty thousand cash. For nine months and thirty students Gee and whiz. one teacher. Gee whiz. And a teacher is not the one getting and the money. And the highest failure rate in the state of Oregon. That's that's um, and that teacher is usually a dedicated person who's trying to do her best right. or his or her right. best. Right. 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 But uh, it's it's that four hundred and twenty thousand starts here and all kinds of unprincipled special interests have their yeah. hands out yeah. and by the time it reaches yeah. the classroom there's about a third yeah. of it left. Plus, the people who take the money away from the classroom don't have the good the the, the, the good manners yeah. to take their money and go to the beach. Yeah. They stay there and make life miserable for the teacher while she tries to teach by yeah. passing all kinds of regulations about yeah. what she can do. Yeah. Yeah. And this this is uh, no, it's just this, no, this it's system the has uh, hardening of the arteries. Yeah, it needs right. exactly. uh, therapy. Exactly. And then I, and I, I, I have to mention this thing because I want to ask you about that piece. That, that there's no voc ed. You know, there's no voc ed here in the Portland Metropolitan. There used to be. Anything out? That's right. Anything. When I went to school 50 years yeah, ago, I went to shop. Yeah, yeah. I made stuff. Yeah, I had thing. to go to shop. Yeah. I went into science. I was a, a particularly good at math and science, but I had to go to shop and make stuff out of metal and wood. <laughs> yeah, same here. Even if I didn't want voc ed, I couldn't get out of school without it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And again, I'm thinking about those brands. And here we go to the brands. What brand is pretty well in charge at this point in time? Yeah. As opposed to looking at what the issues are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's a very, very important piece. Okay, so now, now that we've, we've gone through that piece aspect of it, uh, from a statewide standpoint, any other interest, anything that you might have said that sort of stood out during your tenure there that you felt that that, that should no, that, that All I can do is I advise every voter and every grassroots person who wants to make a difference for their state or nation to work for the candidate and forget about the parties. Work mm -hmm. for the candidate. Mm -hmm. Find a man or woman that you think would be a great asset to our state or nation and get behind them and try to elect them. Good point. 
Because that was the other area the we, we was going to talk about. Party. Because that was the other thing that it, 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 you've, um, it really interests me when you when you and I talked and you got me on this particular venture besides doing the outreaching, if you will, and talking to anybody and everybody. It wasn't the brand. Talking to anybody and everybody, trying to dis identify what the issues are, and then recruiting folks mm -hmm. to come and run, yeah. run for office. Mm -hmm as it relates to these issues. Yep. And hopefully if they were either registered R's or D's or whatever, uh, the idea is if we do a better job and we got a brand of an R, guess what, they, they want to consider. And the recruitment used to always be done by the ordinary people. Yes. It's time to, they're going to be a congressional election. You know mm -hmm. the average congressman served one term for the wow. first hundred years? Wow. They just were, they were just public services citizens. They went up and served for two years and came back home, went mm -hmm. back to their right. lives. Right. <laughs> but the way that was done, a few people from the community would go over and see Joe at the grocery store. They'd say, you know, you've got a nice family here, you're, you're respected in the community, you're honest, and we'd like to see you serve us in Congress for two years. Mm -hmm. And Joe would say, I, I can't do that, i, I got a grocery store mm -hmm. to run. And then, but he'd be a little proud, you know, and she'd yeah, thinking yeah, of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'd talk him into it, he'd go serve for two years, then get out and somebody else would do it. Mm -hmm. But it was the people, the grassroots people, that went and, and recruited the people they respected in their community mm -hmm. to go and do these public service jobs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now it's oh, it's, it's some crazy. political party, a political functionaries mm -hmm. that does it, and it's not uh, public service. The guy's getting a 20-year career out of it where he hopes to get famous and rich. Mm -hmm. That's what's wrecking our country. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, on that, on that same note, when I'm thinking about it also, too, that and you, you, you made that point, and that was that... Um, and then as chair, you actually ran for office too at the same time. Yeah. I mean, you were basically preaching exactly what you... I recruited some other, and you recruited, some other officials yes, to run for office too. They didn't which, like that. One of which was mine too. <laughs> Me. At least, right? and, one of and it elected. Made, He's in the state legislature. Yeah. Made, but it made a lot of sense. I mean, the fact that I mean, you sure you were wearing two hats, but the fact of the matter is you were involved. In, in well, if you have trouble uh, getting uh, good people to run no. and getting people who will do what they say they'll do when they're elected. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Republican Party is filled to the brim with people who walked out of their living rooms and said, I'd like to help. Mm -hmm. That means they're more engaged, they're more interested in this sort of thing. And some of them rise to the, uh, have leadership capabilities, so you see them leading a county party or mm -hmm. even a state party. And those who have shown that they want to give their lives as volunteers to this process to help provide a very nice pool to find some good candidates. Mm -hmm. And the idea that there's a party here and the candidates here, we have people, the party says, gee, who do we have running in district so-and-so? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, maybe you should. I, I went all over the state. I told the people in every county, I, I told the county chairman, uh, you know the people in your county, go recruit good candidates. But if you fail to get a candidate, you're it. <laughs> 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 go look in the mirror. And you know some of them did it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I did it, they got mad at me, but uh, I, was, I think it was a thing, and in fact, it made it e easier to do a good job. But isn't that what it's all about? The good, what it's all about is public service to yeah. fill, yeah. Yeah. as volunteers, these positions that must be filled in our constitutional republic. Mm -hmm. And it is the career politician, the non-volunteer, the unprincipled individual who wants power and money by getting into politics and getting a position and keeping it, that's at the heart of most of the problems we have in our country. You think the public is about ready for change? Well, it sure looks like it from what the way we're acting to Donald Trump. There we go. Now <laughs> we go. That's when I wanted to get on because I want to spend this next 15 minutes talking about uh, talking about Donald. I mean, boy, yeah. he's the igniter, boy. I tell you, he's really and and really his definition. What, what would you, what would you say? It's not just Donald Trump the individual. It's what he represents. Well, look, okay? uh, Ted Cruz another of the candidates said it very well. Okay. He said, uh, one of the worst things you can do in Washington today is tell the truth. And he also said it's not Republicans against Democrats, it's the Republicans Democrats against the people. Uh, and, and that's the way it is. Now he's told the truth. He mm -hmm. told it in a, in a level-headed way, but he told the truth. Donald Trump is the guy that tells the truth. This guy, I mean, whether you like him or not, this is a tough-talking Eastern businessman with a big ego who's talking to the people exactly the way he talks to people day to day. In his business. And the people love it. Mm -hmm. Because first, he's telling the truth. This is what I am. So he comes on, he makes some comment, and it's got a little bit of slang in it, and it's, uh, it isn't designed to be just uh, politically correct, because he is what he is. 
And uh, the people like it because mm -hmm. first they see the honesty in it. Mm -hmm. He is telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Here I am. I'm Donald Trump. This is the way I see things. He's probably not right about everything. Mm -hmm. But he's a tough-talking Eastern businessman, and they're hearing that. And he, he's not mis he's, He's not a mealy-mouthed guy mm -hmm. who's trying to manipulate them. Mm -hmm. He just comes out, I'm Donald Trump. I'd make a great president. Let me tell you what I want to do. Mm -hmm. The people are responding to that. Mm -hmm. And it's just like when, uh, when Ted Cruz says quietly, the, most, the worst thing you can do in this town, Washington, is to tell the truth. That's why they're responding to Trump. I'm not telling you he's the greatest man for yeah, president. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't even have an opinion right now. But uh, but the, the reason people are responding to this guy is he's just coming out. They know he's talking to him the same way he talked to him in an elevator going up in a skyscraper mm -hmm. in in New York. Mm -hmm. This is who I am, and by golly, it's the way I think about it. At least he's honest, and also he's right about some of these major issues. And there are other men and women, mostly men running, like Cruz, uh, uh, like uh, Ben Carson, people like this fine Americans who speak more quietly and in a little more politic way, but they're saying the same thing. This is the truth. Donald Trump is saying it in such a way that everybody just says, hey, yeah, <laughs> at his work. <laughs> what can I say? I don't know. Maybe he'll be president. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, well, let's pick up one of those areas that he that he spent some time in that was is still on the table, yeah. and that was the whole issue with Planned Parenthood. Yeah. I mean, those videos came out on the on the, in the news, if you will, yeah. visual videos, and it's kind of interesting how people were, there were some folks who were kind of like, what's the problem? We're just looking at these videos as if it was just nothing, you know, drinking wine. I mean, what's the problem with, with these body parts yeah. and this, that, and the other? Not recognizing well, these were actually human beings. I mean, I, I don't understand. I, uh, I'm, I'm, you, am I you, missing something? When you, we're talking about an egg or a molecule that you normally you're experimenting with. Were we talking about a molecule or were we talking about? Well, you know, I'm rapidly pro-life. Yes, right. That's exactly okay, right. the way Mr. DeFazio describes me because that's the way I describe yes. myself. Very, very strongly against abortion. Okay, I, I think killing children is not a good idea. Yeah. I think it's murder. But I mean, it's another step forward to be cutting them up and selling the pieces and doing it in the crass way that he's done. Mm -hmm. Now, you can do research. For example, our laboratory did some research on the human eye. And we obtained from professionals eye lenses from people who had donated their eyes to research mm -hmm. after they died. And it's very carefully done and respected and so forth. And these are adults who donated their tissues to be used in research. Mm -hmm. These people apparently are just chopping them up on demand. And if that isn't enough to bring the, the fundamental humanity yeah. of an individual to the surface in a very angry way, I don't know what it is. And, and uh, this Planned Parenthood organization is just so totally out of control that it's, it's just hard to believe. And they, banning their government funding should be step one, in my opinion. Yeah, it should, it should be. It's, it's just, it's just fundamental human nature should be repelled so much by this. Now, that's not to say that they don't need some fetal tissue for research. Now, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. you know, a lot of people want to draw the line and so, so forth. But there are also a lot of uh, uh, children that die naturally. A lot of children are not carried to term. A lot of children die in childbirth, even if we didn't have abortion at all. Mm -hmm. And the parents of those children could be allowing their tissues with proper mm -hmm. respect mm -hmm. be, be being used by scientists mm -hmm. if they need them. But taking, uh, uh, taking kids that never had a chance, killing them, mm -hmm. and in some cases apparently killing them by a method that the researcher likes so that he will preserve the pieces mm -hmm. he wants to yeah. use, that's so alien to human. I mean, it, 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 I, I can't. I can't even understand it. And that it's allowed in this country, and that it's, a, that it's paid for by my tax dollars, mm -hmm. is something that's beyond comprehension. And tr tr Trump recognizes that. Yeah, just yeah. recognizes. Well, a lot of other people do. I don't think yeah, he yeah, did. Yeah. I don't think Trump did a poll to see no, what people would no, think. He no, just he says that's ridiculous. Just, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. He looked at the video. <laughs> he's and then, right. But then some of the some of the counters were things like, well, they, someone edited the films. I mean, well, edited the pieces. That's just lies. I mean, well, what you know, the, the, our 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 system is so filled with unprincipled liars 
that it's 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 hard to get past them. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know anything about the details of that statement, but it sounds like just one of these lies to to, to deflect people from the. From, but then, from the but point. then you go right back to the brand thing. The, the videos, I mean, they haven't denied they're cutting up children and selling them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but, the, but the, go back to the brand. The R is in the D. Yeah. So who's at fault? You got me. You understand what I'm saying? Well, uh, R and the D. Uh, Normally, both. They, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, right now, you should be able to get a unanimous vote in the United States Congress to stop that now right. and to stop the funding now. Mm -hmm. Right now, you should be able to get a 100% unanimous vote in Washington from both houses of Congress stopping that cold. And that's from the Republicans and the Democrats. Because you know the other thing, and I, a president that they would practically yeah. throw from office if yeah. he didn't sign the bill. Yeah, that's, right. that's what you should get, and what you're getting is mealy mouth. To waffling around by career politicians who are looking at the polls and trying to decide what's good for them wow. and how they can turn this this issue to their best interests and does their constituency like it, it it's uh, both parties are at fault and you know and then the other thing when I think when I think about I uh, again yeah. I'll make the point about black lives matters in, yeah. in that regards yeah. and it's been said statistically wise they they are, they've built these facilities in in poor neighborhoods, yeah. black communities, oh, yeah. all around this country, yeah. and 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 I'm in all due respect, I've talked to some folks, black black yeah. Americans, who have said, well, gee, was they defending these folks about this piece? Um, well, uh, it is well known that uh, uh, abortion kills disproportionately larger numbers of black people. Yes, right, and that is because they these elitists have an attitude that they prey more upon the poor. They prey on the poor, and we know that for reasons that we hope will disappear in our country, mm -hmm. our, our custom and culture in our country and our history and so forth has left more people in the poor, poor black people than poor sure, whites proportionately. Sure, sure. So they go in these poor communities and they victimize everybody. But that, uh, that should stop too. Gee, uh, it's, I mean, I don't see any difference. Well, I, perhaps I should, but uh, some uh, a man, white, black, or yellow, that's shot wrongly by a policeman is dead. Mm -hmm. So is a child who is born and then killed mm -hmm. because somehow they made that legal. And then when you chop him up and sell him to the highest bidder, <laughs> and 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 then and then you want to condemn these Muslims for the horrible yeah, things exactly, they do. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's just it's just it's almost appalling. Then. Okay. And we did, we did the Planned Parenthood piece for me. We could spend more time on that, really, yeah. we could. But, but let's talk about We shouldn't the, have spent any time. We it's should intuitively be a, obvious. I don't They're know gone. why. I we don't, don't need them anymore. Yes. I, They're gone. I don't know why. It shouldn't be someone, necessary to debate it. I made, in fact, I even made a statement here when I was on, on a couple of shows that I've done already and said, well, I think the, the president should have called a press conference and said, hey, right up, right up front, we're, we're not going to fund, we're not going to fund abortion. Under any circumstances, in the Planned Parenthood, that, that's there's a start. That'd be a good start. Yeah, start. You got the health <laughs> issue here for the women aspect. That's fine. And then at the same time, the Planned Parenthood folks would be right there at that same plant uh, at, at press conference. And said we are not going to do uh, abortion at this point, point blank. Blah blah blah. You know what I'm saying? Just mm -hmm. just getting that first step over aspect of it, and then maybe consider the the plan, the, the i.e. the health of women and uh, across the board aspect of it, or, or the uh, the health of lives, if you will, across the board, and maybe start reconsidering when we were going back to school, coming up with a with a with a, a, a golden plan, if you will, for women and health in our educational system. Yeah, well, we need everybody to have the best of health. Both Gee, sexes, yes. all races, and we need to stop. Uh, well, I tell you, but again, I, but I'm thinking, thinking about that brand routine. See, yeah. it's sort of blaming the the brand on the on the R as opposed to, but like well, you said, it's, it's both. You should, you should vote for a Republican candidate when he deserves it. Yes, right. And a Democrat when he deserves it. And you should not vote the brand unless the brand deserves it, and both brands are severely tarnished at the present. Yes, very much so. 
Well, anything else to say about it? What, what do you think will be the results, if you will, of the of the the primary? We're talking. We, I don't we're, in, know. we're in the primaries on both sides. Of I don't know. And I think we got uh, Trump we, we is, got uh, we got Hillary Clinton on the other side. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's got a, she's a, got a wild-eyed socialist well, after her. Oh, gee. And you know something? Uh, I don't know much about Bernie Sanders, mm -hmm. but what I've heard over the years is he's an honest man. He's an honest, mm -hmm. screaming socialist. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> socialism. Socialism has been so discredited, discredited everywhere it's been tried in the world. It was, it was a. Uh, uh, that's all been done. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. nonsense. But what I understand is he's an honest socialist. Yeah. And maybe the Democrats are looking for an honest politician, and they don't have one in Hillary. So here we got the, maybe the most honest man in the Democratic Party is a wild-eyed socialist. <laughs> go Bernie. You, know, you think they look, you think they look going along with his brand? Well, he might improve their brand. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, okay. Looks like we're about at the end of the end of our tour here. I think it's been very enjoyable. All right, we appreciate you. We, great we're going to try to have you here once a month. By the way, we we <laughs> like you. We like you. We like you well, here. Well, I enjoy being and here. You, you were program. you were a very fine uh, chair uh, during your tenure, and uh, hopefully, we can bring out some of the issues along that particular line. Well, we can talk about more because I'm not constrained by trying to get people elected. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so back to the point. <laughs> Well, it's been great, you know, and, and like I said, uh, we're going to bring up some other issues that I think of, of, of major concerns that we have here now. Right. Thank we're you. definitely going to follow the, the presidential race, but we're going to follow a lot of the issues here in Oregon. Mm -hmm. Education, right, jobs, and all the things that we were talking about, and hopefully we can, we can start talking about trying to get talking to the issues, mm -hmm. if you will, that are very important to the tape. Okay, so with that, thank you very much, folks. We appreciate you, and uh, hopefully we can... We can start thinking about uh, uh, this, this, the next show. We got something else coming up real good. Maybe we might even have Teresa Redford. She can come up here and, mm -hmm. and talk about what her issues are in regards to her efforts along that particular line, whether it be crime or this, that, and the other. And maybe we can maybe try to see if I can get a Democrat here sitting in your seat. You Hard tried to find. that all the time I was chairman. I mean, you couldn't get anybody to it's, debate it's, me. It's always an issue. I need to get, I don't know what's going on. Maybe you can give them a call. No, I don't call them uh, <laughs> Democrat politicians. Well, all right. Well, thank I call you very them, much. but I call them. <laughs> thank you, folks. Have a good one. I'll right. see you next week. You take care. Bye.